Hey guys, the Mention Master Studios here, how y'all doing? So I'm sure as you guys know, when it comes to Season 8 of Ninjago, we were introduced to a brand new character by the name of Harumi. Harumi was initially presented to us as being a ninja ally for the season and a love interest for Lloyd. However, halfway through the season, as it turns out, Harumi was actually the main antagonist of Season 8, and not only that, she was actually manipulating Lloyd the entire time, and she didn't actually like Lloyd, in fact, she hated him. And Harumi even returned during Season 9 as another major antagonist during the season, until she ultimately died towards the end of Season 9. And a lot of people really like Harumi and consider her to be this great and amazing character. I do not agree with this at all. In my personal opinion, I don't like Harumi. In fact, Harumi is my personal least favorite character when it comes to the show, and I have mentioned this multiple times in some of my videos. Yet I've never really explained my full thoughts as to why this is. So that's what I'm going to be going over in today's video, or rather in today's videos, because I need two videos in order to fully go over this whole thing. So let's get into this whole thing then. First reason as to why I don't like Harumi. Harumi's backstory makes absolutely no sense when you look at it. Harumi's whole backstory is this. Her parents died during the Great Devourer event, so she blames the ninja. You know, the people responsible for protecting Ninjago and trying to stop the Devourer. So then you would imagine by the same logic that she would despise Garmanon, since he's the one who destroyed the Devourer. But no, Harumi praises Garmanon for destroying the Devourer, and not only that, even starts an entire cult dedicates him. So she praises Garmanon for destroying the Devourer, but hates the ninja even though they were trying to accomplish the exact same goal as him. That doesn't make any sense at all. Not only that though, but Harumi also blames the ninja for her parents dying. We know this for a fact because as she says during the season 8 episode Game of Mass, she says to Lloyd, and I quote, I never asked to be a princess or to be an orphan, you gifted me that. Meaning that again, she blames the ninja for her parents dying, when that isn't the case at all. Well, that was the Great Devourer, and if you want to get even more specific, it would be the Serpentine and Pythor who are responsible, not the ninja. And something else that doesn't make any sense is that when it comes to Harumi, she's aware of the fact that Garmanon wouldn't have been able to save her parents, because once again, during Game of Masks, she said is that he couldn't save my family, meaning that, again, Garmanon wasn't able to save Harumi's family, and Harumi is aware of this fact. Yet, she still hates the ninja for practically no reason at all, and praises Garmanon, so... Harumi's whole thing when it comes to saying the ninja is this. Her parents died during the Great Devourer event, so she praises Garmanon for destroying the Devourer, yet she hates the ninja even though they are trying to accomplish the exact same goal as him. She was fully aware of the fact that the ninja were trying to stop the Devourer and were saving a whole bunch of people, well, yet she still hates them and blames the ninja for her parents dying even though they weren't responsible at all. Again, like I said, this makes absolutely no sense at all when you look at it. Here's another reason as to why I don't like Harumi. Harumi is just an unlikable character in my opinion. There's two big things when it comes to Harumi that makes me really not like her as a character, and here's why. For starters, when it comes to Harumi, it's the fact that she sees herself as the greatest villain in all of Ninjago. We know this for a fact because during the Season 8 episode of The Crying One, her and Lloyd are talking about villains, and Harumi said that the greatest villain is, quote, the one you never even knew was there, the one who always gets away, and Lloyd responds with the quiet one. This means that Harumi views herself as the greatest villain in all Ninjago, and me personally, I have to wonder why exactly. It's never any real reason as to given as to why Harumi views herself as the greatest villain in all Ninjago. Like, she's one of the few Ninjago villains who has actually straight up killed people, that's what she did during the second episode. But I'm just not sure why she views herself as Ninjago's greatest villain, and it's not just that. Another big reason as to why I don't like Rumi as a person is mainly just because she only cares about herself and no one else at all. And this is made especially clear during the Season 9 episode Radio Free Ninjago, after Mystery was killed off. Rumi doesn't care about what happens to the other members of the Sons of Garmanon, she only cares about herself. And this is made especially clear when she's talking to Hilo and some of the other members of the Sons of Garmanon. Where she straight obsessed them, and I quote, I don't know, just don't make me look bad. Again, she doesn't care about what happens to the other members of the Sons of Garmanon, just herself. So yeah, there's that, and then there's also Harumi's views on other people, which I'm going to be getting back to that. When it comes to Harumi's other views on people, this mainly relates to two groups of people in particular, the Emperor and Empress and the Ninja. When it comes to the Emperor and Empress, these are the people who took in Harumi and raised her up after her biological parents died during the Great Devourer event. Something that we can assume really only happened to Harumi. And since again, we know for a fact that her parents died, but it's not entirely clear as to whether or not anyone else died during the Great Devourer attack. So again, this was something pretty nice that actually happened to Harumi. 
And how does Harumi repay the Emperor and Empress for this loving and caring action? Harumi repays them by blowing up the Palace of Secrets, killing both of them, using the Palace of Secrets to resurrect a demon, and not caring one bit about either one of them. Harumi straight up says during the episode Game of Masks, and I quote, they were never my parents, which really shows you just how much Harumi actually cared about the Emperor and Empress. Again, these are the people who took her in and raised her up, and Harumi killed the both of them and didn't care one bit about either of them. Just, seriously, that is messed up. And when it comes to the ninja, it only gets worse. When it comes to the ninja, according to Harumi, they aren't Ninjago's protectors. They fail constantly, others pay the price for it, and apparently the ninja are, quote, just a bunch of little kids playing dress-up. And to that, I ask you the question, Harumi, what exactly were you doing when all this terrible stuff was happening to Ninjago? Were you risking your life, putting everything on the line, doing whatever you could in order to save the place you call home? No, no, you weren't. You were just letting all these terrible things happen and not doing anything in order to actually step in. Harumi, as we learned during the episode Game of Mask, where she says all this, Harumi's just a gigantic hypocrite when you look at it, because again... She says that the ninja don't do anything in order to protect Ninjago, yet she herself has actually done nothing in order to protect Ninjago. Meanwhile, the ninja, they actually do stuff. And honestly, as a Zayn fan, I am extra mad when it comes to this, because I'm sure as you guys know, back during Season 3, Zayn literally dies to save everyone. But I guess that isn't protecting Ninjago, which just, that makes me pretty upset, honestly. Again, especially since I am a Zayn fan, honestly. Another big reason as to why I don't like Rumi is this, and this is a pretty big reason. Her words and actions completely contradict each other. According to Harumi during the episode Game of Mass, her plan is to, quote, protect Ninjago, give it the leader it truly deserves, restore it to glory. And what does Harumi do when it comes to that? Literally the exact opposite. When it comes to Harumi, her plan is, and this is the exact order in which it happened, so stay with me now, it is starting a cult dedicated to an Oni warlord, Blowing up the Palace of Secrets, killing the Emperor and Empress of Ninjago, who were good people and also her parents, her adoptive parents. Killing the ninja, the protectors of Ninjago, resurrecting said Oni Warlord, taking over Ninjago by force via the Oni Titan, keeping an iron grip on the city, leaving Ninjago completely destroyed and in ruins, and leaving the people of Ninjago in a state of fear and panic, or dead. How exactly is any of that protecting Ninjago or restoring it to glory? It's not. It's literally the exact opposite when it comes to that. That just doesn't make any sense to me. Why did Rumi say that she was going to protect Ninjago and restore it to glory when she does literally the exact opposite? Like, seriously, when it comes to some of the stuff that Rumi does, especially when it comes to the attack on Ninjago and blowing up Ninjago City, that's terrorism. Like, seriously, this is not doing anything good when it comes to Ninjago. And I'd like to take a point when it comes to mention the people, because again, like I said, the people were left in a state of fear and panic, as we can clearly see during the events of Season 9, or there's also the possibility that people ended up dying as a result of the attack on Ninjago City. We know for a fact that people did die as a result of the attack on the Palace of Secrets. However, when it comes to this big attack on Ninjago City, Lloyd brings up that people are going to die as a result of the attack during the Season 8 finale. And her response to this is her saying, this is only the beginning. Seemingly implying that not only does Rumi think that innocent people are going to die when it comes to this attack, she may actually want innocent people to die as a result of the attack, considering she doesn't care when it comes to any of this stuff. And during Season 9, she even kind of repeats this during the first episode, saying that the people's fear controls them. This means that when it comes to Rumi, she's clearly aware of the fact that when it comes to her actions, they are not good and she is in fact the bad guy. Yet again, she still sends this stuff when it comes to Season 8, so... She's saying one thing, yet her actions do literally the exact opposite and lead Ninjago in a really, really terrible spawn, arguably the worst it's ever been since the first Overlord event all the way back during Season 2. Just, seriously, yeah, this is not protecting Ninjago. This is literally the exact opposite and just, it makes no sense at all. Now, if this is all that there was when it came to Harumi, I wouldn't really be making this video, honestly. For me, personally, when it came to all this stuff, I wouldn't have liked Rumi, but I wouldn't have considered her to be my least favorite character when it comes to the show. Again, I wouldn't have liked her, but my opinions wouldn't be like this when it comes to her. But, but there is one scene, just one scene from season 9 where I couldn't take it anymore. I had officially had it and I was just so, so angry when it came to this moment. I'm referring to Harumi's death scene. Harumi's death scene, in my opinion, is 
the worst moment in the entirety of the show without question, Aussie. I really, really do not like this moment at all, and here's why. For starters, this moment completely goes against Harumi's character. All throughout the events of seasons 8 and 9, Harumi was presented to us as being an evil sadistic killer who found joy in people's suffering and who only cared about herself. So the decision for her to save three people before she died made no sense, especially considering the fact that when it came to the season 8 finale, Lloyd brought up that this very thing would happen and Harumi just didn't care. Not only that, again, she even implied that she wanted this to happen. So her deciding to save three people, it just doesn't make any sense at all when it comes to this moment. Just, it's just, what the heck? And the other big reason why you don't like this scene is because of the fact that fans say that when it comes to this moment, it means that Harumi redeemed herself and that she wasn't that bad of a person. Pretty much ignoring all the terrible stuff that Harumi did during the events of seasons 8 and 9. Which again, include the multiple attacks on Ninjago City, her just straight up killing a bunch of innocent people and showing absolutely no remorse for her actions, and her treating Lloyd like absolute garbage. Just, seriously, Harumi did a whole bunch of really, really terrible stuff during the events of seasons 8 and 9. And then just... How is it that people can say that this one moment redeems her? In my opinion, saving three people does not make up for all the terrible stuff Rumi did. Especially her killing a ton of innocent people, again, including the Emperor and Empress, who were her adoptive parents. Just, it makes no sense at all. And then most recently, there's the fact that Tommy and Trace in the co-creator of the show has confirmed multiple times when it comes to Rumi that she did in fact die as a result of this. But spoilers for Crystal Eyes when it comes to Ninjago. As it turns out, Hermie is actually still alive, somehow because she was the mysterious figure in the Kamuki mask this whole time, actually. How did Hermie come back to life? I have no idea, but in my opinion, Hermie being alive makes this scene even worse, because apparently Hermie never actually died during this, or maybe she did, it's not super clear, but just, either way, I really, really don't like Hermie's death scene at all, and just, it is easily my least favorite moment when it comes to the show, without question. Now you may have noticed that when it came to this video, there was one pretty big thing related to Harumi that I did not talk about when it came to this. With that obviously being the ship between her and Lloyd. And there was a reason as to why I left it out. It is because that is why I'm going to be going over in this second video. I just had to talk about it in a second video because otherwise this video in my opinion would be way too long. So just keep that in mind, part 2 of this video is going to be me going over why I don't like the shit between Lloyd and Harumi. So just keep that sort of thing in mind. And that's pretty much all I got for you guys. So later guys, this is Dimension Master Studios, signing off.